Hello everyone, Andrew here from The Indie Interview, bringing you another interview from an inspiring indie or an indie related topic. And in this case, it's both. Today I'm talking to Lainey and we're talking about becoming a supporting actor. Hi Lainey. Hi Andrew. Well, maybe we ought to explain what being a supporting actor is. It's a very important role, being a supporting actor. Um, you're, you're invited on set to be part of the production, but not in a mainstream way. So you can be doing anything from, you know, just walking around the background, sitting in a pub, you know, chatting, um, but you are part of the whole production. You know, they can't do it without background actors. So, yeah, and that's what we do. And this is an exceptionally good career choice if you are of a certain age, because it's, a, it's quite a flexible role. Yes, it is. If you're prepared for early mornings, right? long sitting, you know, sitting around for very long periods of time um, and things like that, it's brilliant. And, but there are so many advantages. There are a few disadvantages. I'll go through them if you want. The yeah, yeah. advantages are, you know, uh, you meet people from all walks of life. Um, every face fits, by the way. You know, you can't say, oh, I'm a bit old for that. Every face they want, because they're looking at walks of life from everywhere yeah okay, okay. so um and you meet people um and you you know it's anybody from teenagers to the elderly um and you get well fed on these things you know <laughs> there is a lot of sitting around though yeah. and sometimes it's very cold especially in the winter you know you you, you get on you they put you onto a, a bus usually and you just sit there and when you're sitting there with your your jumper on you know or your, your blanket i always bring a blanket with me um, and you read a book or whatever. Uh, that's the only draw. That's one of the drawbacks. And there's also the getting up at four o'clock in the morning, m it often, mm. to get to your location because you have to be there because filming always begins at six. Although the actual cameras don't start rolling until maybe 11, you know, and you're sitting there all that time waiting to get a cue to go in and do your bit, you know. But it still sounds like a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. It really, I mean, the thing is, you don't do it for the money. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a passion. It's something that I got involved with a long time ago, a very long time ago, and um, couldn't do it for various reasons uh, at the time, couldn't continue doing it. I did it for one film and uh, my children, I answered an advert in the local paper yeah. for my children to be part of, you know, was any, any teenagers, you know, young teenagers were looking for for this film. And I said it was in, during the summer holidays, perfect. And I said to the kid, right, come on, let's go and, 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 and join. So we went down and joined and, and they became film extras. In fact, they got really good parts. One of my daughters, who's got long red hair, perfect for filming. She was in everything. She was seeing this mm -hmm. and seeing that. They, they sent her for drumming lesson and uh, fabulous. And anyway, they said to me, well, why would you like to stay? And I did. And that gave me a taste for it. And I knew I liked it. But I couldn't do it because I was working full time and you can't, it's something that you're very, very difficult to do if you've got a job because right. the way the way it's structured, they could phone you, say, um, on a Monday and say, you free Thursday? Oh yeah, I'll go and ask my boss, ask your boss. Um, and he gives you Thursday off and then they change it to the following Monday. And then by the time Wednesday comes, they, they go back and say, sorry, no, we've, we've gone back to the Thursday again. And you just can't do it. It's you know it's very very difficult to to do it with other commitments so it, it's good to do as part of a portfolio or perhaps if you're retired it could be a very good way to get out and meet people yes absolutely yeah yeah you 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 it, it's, it's a perfect because you can choose to do what you want to do you know you can apply for doing things as some some agencies have an applying system mm -hmm. where you go in and look and see what's available and you click oh yes I, i'm interested in that doesn't mean you, you'll get it but you show an interest and then if, if they think that your look is right they will um contact you and uh you know if to see if you're available and you can say well no i'm not available next week and that's fine that's absolutely fine to do that other agencies will just call you and say are you free next next thursday B the bbc mm -hmm. and uh you know, guys and dolls are, you know, they, that's how they do. But generally, when they phone you, it's a guaranteed job. So, so how these agencies, how do, how do you link in? How do you get the work? Um, well, you join the agency. So there's um, Universal Extras, which is one that I'm with. Very good. 
um, you literally just go on, do, do a web search on Universal Extras and there'll be um, a, a, a button to uh, join and you go in and join. Now you need to have a certain amount of photographs ready before you join really. So, and you, you want good quality photos. Um, so if I was gonna do it, uh, you know, on a regular basis, I would pay a photographer to do some good photographs because you need good background. They can't have, like for instance, Andrew's background would be no good because they can't see the person with yeah. all the books and everything in the background, do you know what I mean? So all my photographs are on a plain white wall and I bought all my own equipment and I take my own photographs with using um, a, a free space, you know, lens yeah. and, and it, it, uh, I, I, you know, stage the photograph and then, and then take it remotely. Um, and, uh, you know, these photographs, I have, uh, for instance, um, an on office outfit, a, if I was going for a, a, ball, a ball gown. Yeah. Out, if I was going for a, a, an important dinner, because you see a lot of the f filming that they do may require you to go to a ball or um, in, yeah. in which I've had to do. And the good thing is, I bought my ball gown um, mm -hmm. in a charity shop for ten pounds, and the film company hire it for twenty five. Oh my goodness! So, and I was on. I used that for two days, so I got fifty pounds mm -hmm. for a ten pound ball. So, and but most. Then, clothes I, I have for filming I have bought in charity shops I mean I was in a in a series called trolleyed yeah. uh, a while ago and it's supposed to be set in a in a in a sort of down market area um, and it's a supermarket in a down market area mm. and uh, all the clothes I went and bought were, were, were you know not not anything I would wear but you know sort of shabby type uh, chavy chavy clothes that's a good word <laughs> for the <hoodie> and <laughs> So, so do they provide costumes? Or they do, do you... provide costumes if they haven't. I'd rather bring my own. I mean, yeah. what they'll do is they'll say, if, if say for instance, you get a job, um, you're always going to brief the night before. Mm -hmm. and it could come on an email yeah. and um, or text or something, either depending on the company, some emails, some text. And you, it will say, um, you are going to be a farmer's wife, so please dress appropriately. Yeah. Uh, as a farmer's wife or they might say that you're in an office and you'd be a receptionist uh, so please dress up so you know really what you're gonna what you're letting yourself in yeah. for yeah. they are usually in a big van the uh, costume and makeup now they can't bring clothes for everybody yeah. it just would be impossible for them to do that if it's a really important um production where they need uh, like the crown i was in the crown right. and my scene was set in in 19 Seventy-three, I think, or no, maybe, maybe earlier in the in the late sixties, and I needed to dress appropriately for that uh, period. So they supply the costumes, and they're very, very um, strict on the, the type of even the accessories that you wear. The accessories have to be you, you don't wear anything of yourself, even down to a camisole that I wore underneath my suit. They supplied, and nobody can yeah. see it, but it, it, it's all part and parcel of the authenticity of it. I, I'm, I'm intrigued. What did you do in The Crown? Um, it was a polo match. Um, yeah. and, but the thing is, it was a polo match where Camilla and um, Charles sort of were there together. Yeah. And um, uh, they didn't really want oldies like me. Um, so I was just sort of at the polo match watching, observing behind my little MG, yeah. uh, <laughs> which was a, a prop, and, um, and having a picnic. So I was sitting at a table having a picnic. Now all the action was on, in the stand with all the yeah. youngsters, all Charles' friends, Camilla's friends, where yeah. they were having a bit of a party going on. So you know, I'm there in the in the background, and it was blowing a hooli that day. Yeah. And I looked like Margaret Thatcher. I mean, they did my hair, and I looked, and I had a suit, and I looked like Margaret Thatcher. But the good thing was, we were sitting at our picnic table, and we all had a picnic basket, and the camera. Uh, the uh, production team came around and said, open your picnic basket and, you know, get them. And she, while the filming's gone on, you can eat whatever's in there. Well, the picnic basket was fantastic. <laughs> we had apple ties instead of, um, you know, sh champagne. Yeah. It wasn't, you, you never have actual drinks. You just have usually yeah. apple juice or something. So we had this these drinks and they kept coming around and topping them up. But there was a bottle of champagne in a in an ice bucket. and uh, But there was grapes, sandwiches, you know, all sorts of lovely 
lovely foods there that we could just, you know, chuck in. And after a little while, when you get a bit bored and you're wait, waiting around all the time, you think, oh, I think I'll go and see what they've got up there. So, <laughs> so everybody's walking up and down, eating and nibbling other people's foods. But yeah, so you do. It's good fun. It's good fun. It, it sounds like an awful lot of fun. I mean, it, 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 you you must have a lot of memorable moments. But you know, is there one that really sticks out for you? Oh well, goodness, yeah. There was this um, one time. I it's one Sunday morning. I was in bed, mm. and my phone went, and it was someone like Sarah, someone from the BBC. Now that's not unusual because I've been in Hol- Holby City and another oh. BBC production. So. For me, it was a bit of a shock early in the morning because it was quite early. And I uh, picked up the phone and, oh, hello, this is Sarah from the BBC. And I said, oh, hello, Sarah, what can, how can I help? And she said, well, it's about Ed coming out of Strictly Come Dancing last night. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah. And she said, well, what I'd like to do, if it's OK with you, is give you a call in about half an hour, video call in half an hour. And we'll get a little, a little bit of dialogue going about how you, you felt about him coming out of um, Strictly Come Dancing, you know. And, and and I just assumed it was a fan thing, you know, they were going to ask a few yeah. people who watched the show, blah, blah, blah. And he went, yeah, no, no problem. So I, I said, fine, and being the professional that I am, put the phone down and panicked, completely panicked. Yeah. Like, I don't even watch Strictly Come Down, so what am I going to do? And no. I said, right, I'm going to go and get a shower, I'm going to go and get ready. You find some information on Ed Balls coming out on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. And anyway, that, that, this is what it was. Ten minutes later, they called me back and said, oh, I'm terribly sorry. We got the wrong number. We thought you were a Beck Cooper, which is his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I was absolutely panicked. <laughs> oh but yeah. I suppose that's the r- rich tapestry of life, isn't it? Yeah. When you... yeah. Well, yeah. what about on set? Have you got a favourite moment? On set? Um, lot, well, there's so many. There's, there's lots of moments on set. I mean, I did a uh, one-to-one with uh, Steve Tomlinson, mm-hmm. which was really funny, and it was in a program called Trolleyed. Mm-hmm. And Trolleyed is the most fantastic production that unfortunately don't make it anymore, but it's the most fantastic production you could be on because it's just everyone's just big kids having a laugh, you know. Mm-hmm. And there is a, a certain element of seriousness because you always have to be professional on set. But yeah. when I was with Steve Tomlinson, I don't know if any, if any of you have watched Trolleyed, it was uh, the um, that he works in the pharmacy and uh, he works with the uh, is sidekick Maggie who's an older lady and uh, they just banter all the time and we did we did this scene where I had to go up to him and chat 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 and we just kept dissolving into laughter we had to do the scene about 18 times it was just because it just kept laughing the, the other two kept laughing I was trying to be very very professional but it was just but it was really good fun and afterwards in between sets they were just included me like I was part of the group and it was it was lovely it's it's really nice you get you get actors like that who will just see you as you know you get others who are a bit you know you know they'll eat separately and they'll they'll they'll, uh, use the facilities that the the, the, uh, food facilities you know after everyone else or before everyone else so that they don't mix but other others just get right you know they just get stuck in which is really good so, the, I mean, this really does sound like a very practical um, work option for someone who is, yeah. you know, over 50. Yeah. What, what, what would be your tips for people thinking, well, yeah, I could do that. Someone, it's someone who's new to this. Yes. Right. So the tips would be initially to contact your agencies. Um, yeah. And there's Guys and Dolls, which is a good agency. And yeah. um, literally, again, get a few photographs together. There's a, few, there's a questionnaire on each uh, of these agencies to fill in. Yeah. Um, and you make sure you have a tape measure with you when you're doing it, because you need all your measurements, your, yeah. even, your, even your hat size, all things like that, your glove size. size, you know, everything you need. Um, and there's Guys and Dolls, there's Universal Extras, Cast and Collective, Stroke 2020 is another company that I use. Yeah. Um, there's also, and now most of these operate in the London area, North yeah. London and Central London. Now I don't do Central London because the public transport just doesn't get you into yeah. London in time because yeah. you have to be there for six usually. Um, I'll apply for one if they say start time is 11. Yeah. Often they do, um, often they do like the crown. Yeah. So when they did that, it was a sort of evening shoot. So it doesn't start till five o'clock. So that was fine. I did, I did that one. And that was central London, but otherwise I avoid it. But, and, but I drive 
everywhere I go because yeah. because you can't rely on transport because yeah. I mean some of the places are uh, like North uh, North London, um, Watford, Boreham yeah. Wood, places like that. We you just wouldn't get a tube or any any transport, yeah. no time, um, and photographs. Make sure your photographs are of good quality and choose your outfits carefully. Um, look at the brief that, that they're giving you. They give you a little, you know, they say they might want some uh, 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 an office or they might just want um, a, a, just a face. Now, they like face without anything on it. They like face with minimum amount of makeup. Um, they're not keen on coloured hair. They'll have coloured hair. If you've got coloured hair, i.e. Um, like reds or, or you yeah. know, um, artificially dyed hair they're not too keen uh, unless it's something like they're filming at Glastonbury something like yep. that they do it then but otherwise it, your work will be restricted by that my work's restricted because my hair is blonde um, and I don't get period dramas um, which is I really would love to have a, to do a period drama depending on the, I mean uh, yep. the crown was a period drama and I got that um, but generally if, if medieval dramas and stuff like that they wouldn't they wouldn't have me uh, because of my hair and because I've got a fringe as well. It didn't have fringes back then. So yeah. Right. I, I'm learning lots this morning. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Um, as I say, you don't, you don't do it for the money. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a passion. It's something that gets you out of the house, gets you talking to yeah. people. And I've met some lovely friends through doing this kind of work. Um, you know, long lasting friends and they'll give me a tip and they'll say, oh, something's coming up in Southampton or in yeah. some instance, you know, and I'll go on and apply and get the job in Southampton, which is really it's a good network we have uh, of, of different people. So if someone was thinking of doing this, what would you say to them? Would you say, just do it, just try yeah, it? Give it a go, give it a go, throw a caution to the wind. I mean, if you, if you want to just tip, dip your toe in the water, get your husband, wife, daughter son to take your photographs for you yeah. you don't, don't have to spend but just try and do it on a plain back a plain background yeah. um and don't spend too much money on on costume just use what you've got or your second hand shopping yeah. i always do anyway um because most of my outfits for filming are not what i wear in normal life and yeah. um, so yeah and then just to dip your toes uh join a join one agency and i would recommend maybe universal extras um um and don't be afraid, whatever you do, you get your first job in. I was terrified when I got my yeah. first job. What do I do? But, you know, I won't know how to do it. I won't know how to do the job. You will, because it's so simple. They might make you stand, say, for instance, they might make you sit in a pub, and all you're doing is sitting, pretending to talk and drink. And that's it, you're just chatting away. They don't like all this animation and pointing, you know, because <laughs> when you watch the old uh, dramas, and the old TV shows, you, you see all the pointers who just want to be noticed, <laughs> but they don't really. I say, can you can you less pointing, please? You know, but uh, so you're just sitting there, um, just chatting as you would normally. And you know, sometimes you do just sit and chat normally, and you forget that you're on set. You know, you the cameras are rolling, um, but yeah. Uh, so don't worry about you. All the instructions will be there. They might say. Uh, put you at, at the corner of the street and say count to ten when the count when, when you hear action count to ten and then walk along the street as if you were sh browsing through a shop window and that's all you have to do and it's so easy and after you because uh, normally generally they'll take there'll be uh, about ten takes on each scene mm -hmm. so after two or three you're you're an expert okay. you're a professional <laughs> and the other thing is I would advise if you do Get a job and go on site be as professional as you can if, although you're in the background and you're not one of the main stars yeah. you have to behave in a professional manner i mean and i've had i've seen people ask to uh, step out for messing around because it's it's in a messing around sort of arena because everyone's having fun yeah. and you know things like twallied or whatever it's just the whole nature of the show is fun and laughter is a comedy but you do have to maintain that professionalism and if some you have to be ready to hear instruction and yeah. not sort of being silly and dancing and messing around and touching the moving the set around you know people were doing that so yeah it, it, it sounds like a really viable thing to do if you get to a certain yeah. point in your life and you've got time to do it it sounds like an absolute fun thing to do yeah and we, we get a lot of couples do it 
Oh, that's there's a, interesting. There's a lot of couples, uh, especially older couples, you know, yeah. um, retired couples who just see it as a day out and they get fed. Yeah. So yeah. you get, you get a, a, in fact, you get too much food. You, it wouldn't be something you'd want to do on a regular basis, otherwise you'd end up, <laughs> <laughs> you know, piling on the pounds. But yeah, the, yeah uh, couples love, you know, because they're together and they're meeting different people I, and they're doing different things and... It's just so, so nice. I guess there's not many jobs you can do as a couple either. No, no, that's it, and such fun, and that's you fun. know, and it's you know, and then there's, there's, you get double the money, so uh, because you 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 both been paid, and you you know go up there together in one car, and you know, but it's 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 different. If you're looking for something to do that's interesting, and um, you know, we'll give you you know a few bob at the end of it. It's 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 worth doing it really is worth doing and you get this insight into the way films are put together and it's just so different to, to, to your belief and because they might film scene three and then uh scene 10 and then scene four you know and so it's all out of sequence so um you don't actually sometimes know like with patrick melrose when i did that i did a scene there and i did several scenes and you don't actually know what the storyline is yeah. Really, I had to read the books to find out what storyline was before, because it took a year for that production to come out. Wow. And uh, that was good. Thank and you, Lainey. I got to chat with Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh that. my goodness! Uh, well, that's probably a, a, an a, an additional benefit of, of this anyway. Yeah, who you might get to talk yeah. to. Yes, it was good. But to I, I'm sure. A, as well. I'm sure a lot of people would enjoy talking to Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh yes, yes. Thank you, Lainey, for, for sharing all that. It, it's been welcome. really informative, really interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Fabulous, and I hope you all have a go. Okay. Thanks for joining us on the Indie Interview. For more information, tools, or to book one of our team to work with you or your business, or if you'd like us to speak at your event or conference, visit imnotdoneyet.co.uk. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at andrew at imnotdoneyet.co.uk. Please do follow or like us on Facebook or Instagram.